Let's learn about how classes work and how to differentiate between classes and objects. What are classes? Well, classes are a way to make your code more modular. When you're building larger systems, you do not want to repeat your code. You may have written code in one script. You want to reuse that in another script. And many modular systems also say, I have some, some implementation that I want to reuse and build on top of each other. And if you put all of the implementation in a class, classes allow your code to be modular, combined with other classes, and you can reuse that. And a classic example of this is, let's say in a you know, GIS setting, you want to be able to define what is a point. For example, a point is a set of X, Y, and Z coordinates. It has got certain properties, how, how to render a point, et cetera. And you can define all of those into a place. Now you want to define a line. Now, a line is a set of points. So when you're defining line, you have to say, okay, I need to define what is point again, and then I can combine them to be correct in line. So instead of doing that, you can say, I have a class which defines what a point is. A line takes this class and says, I want to enhance the functionality and say, I want to put multiple point classes together to form a line class and so on. Right? So now you are able to write your code and reuse that in modules and build on top of each other. Most large systems like QGIS are built with classes. It allows you to avoid code duplication. And also an important part is when you have, let's say you have a way to compute distance in QGIS and you implemented that and you have a function in your class that does the computation. There are many places you use it. Maybe there is a tool that you built in QGIS that computes a distance. You have a processing tool that does the distance. You have a plugin that's also doing the distance computation. Suddenly, you know, somebody invents a new algorithm for making that computation much faster. You can say, I will just go and change the implementation in the class and everybody who uses a class, suddenly their implementation will get faster. You don't have to go and change every place where there was code. So that means users can say, I just want to use this class that does this thing. I don't care how it's implemented. In future, if that implementation improves, my code will get better and faster. And this is why when we teach how to write new algorithms, we say, if you're doing any new development, use this using the processing framework in QGIS. The processing classes are very well structured and over time they get faster and better. And your tool will also get faster and better if you base your tool on their framework. Okay. So this is why classes are important. All of QGIS is written using C++ classes and you have a way to access those C++ classes using Python and we'll understand how to use and write code to use those classes. An important distinction you should be able to tell is what is a class and what is an object. A class is something like a template. A class will have some functions and some variables which are put together in a template. You cannot use classes by itself. You can think of class as like a blueprint. You have a blueprint, you can, you can just see it, but you cannot use this. To be able to use the class, you'll have to you know, create the object from that blueprint before you can use this. So let's say a practical example is, let's say we have an object called car. And you can think of this class as a blueprint that can build the car. It's not a real car yet. It's just instructions on how to create the car. This class can take two parameters, color and type. So you can choose the color of your car. You can choose the type of your car. It has got some functions. And it says, okay, I have a class that knows how to create a car of a specific color and type, and I know this class can drive. But you cannot drive that car yet because it's just a blueprint. It's not a car yet. To be able to drive the car, you need to first construct an object. So you say, I have a class. I want to use this. You have to construct an object. This is also called creating an instance of the class. So you take a class, you initialize it, and you get an object. Once you initialize it, and you get an object, and then only you can use that class. So this is called constructing an object from a class. And this is very important. Many times when you're trying to customize or write something, you'll say, oh, I found the class that does this work. And you try to use it, you'll get an error because it's just a class. You have to go and construct an object, and then only you can use that. So let's say we have a car. We want to use it. You can say, I have this car class. I want to initialize it with the color and type, and then I get this object called my car. And now I can run some functions and use that. This is a very important distinction. 
cannot use classes directly. You need to first initialize it, and then you can use the card. Let's see this in practice. I'm going to switch to QGIS now. This is what Python class looks like. A class can be defined using the class keyword, and I have defined the class. Okay, not important how to what this is. We're going to understand all of this in detail. Let's say I have this class. I want to use this class. I want to say I have a blueprint on creating a car. I want to create my car. Let's see how to use this class. So we have this class and we want to initialize it. This class has two properties that we want to use for initializing the color of the car and type of the car. So let's say I want to create a car with blue color and type sedan. Now, when I call my class with this constructor, I'll get an object. So I'll save it in this variable, my car one. So now I have this object called my car one. So I constructed a blue sedan car out of this class template. I can construct as many objects as possible. So uh, let me construct a new object. I'll say my car two. This time I'll construct a red hatchback car. And I have a new object. And now you can see why you cannot use class directly because class is just a way to create some objects. You can create objects of different type with different behavior. Now these two objects, my car one and my car two are totally different objects. They are constructed from the same classes, but now I can use this. And now if I want to drive the car, I can say my car one dot start. And this will call this function start within the class and it'll print my car started. And I can also call this function my car two dot start. And you can see I've started both the cars. Many times you'll say, oh, I have this function that does exactly what I want. I want to use this function inside the class. So first you have to construct an object of the class and then only you can run the function. Each class has its own properties. So for example, I want to say, what is the color of my car one? So I say my car one dot color and my car two dot color. So these are two different objects and they have different variables inside of them. And those two hold different properties. So if I print this, and I print this, you'll see this one is blue and this one is red. They're objects constructed from a class, but since they are initialized with different variables, they have different properties. Many times it's also useful to just print the object. If I just say, I want to print car and I want to print my car one. It may seem, seem simple now, but in, when you're working with a PyQDS, sometimes you say, is this a class or is this an object? I don't know what is it. So you can just print it. And if I print it, this says, this one is a class, this one is an object. So if I just say, what is car? I have this car class. They say, this is just a class. I cannot use this car variable directly without initializing it. I've initialized this car and saved it into my car one variable. What is my car one? Well, this is an object, so I can use this. So at any point you say, I've got something, I don't know what is it printed. You'll see whether this is a class or an object that has been constructed from a class. So you essentially you can think of a class as a way, a container for use some functions and some variables. You put everything together and say, now I can reuse this whenever I want. Anybody can take this and use that functionality in there. Just remember this mantra, you will thank me later. You cannot use classes, you can use objects, right? And I'll be repeating it at least a hundred times and then you may find it excessive, but just remembering that will solve a lot of problems. And still, I promise you, you'll come back to me at some point and say, my code is giving error. And I'll say, you're trying to use a class, it's not an object, right? So this is kind of one of the things that once you understand it, it'll become much easier to write code. There's, we learned about constructor and objects and methods and self, what is going on? Let's understand those. So let's say we have a class like this. So once we have a class like this, we have to create an object. That means you need to initialize it. So how do we initialize the object? Well, you initialize it by calling the constructor. The constructor will assign whatever the values that use the parameter and creates the instant. The Python constructors is a special function named init. It is underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. Whenever a class is initialized, that function is called. Whatever is inside that function will be run and you'll get a new object. Init can take at least one parameter called self and self refers to the current instance. So when you create an object, you say, I got my car one, that's an object. So self refers to that object you just created. So whenever you see self in context of a class, 
It's referring to the current object. Whenever you see a function, it says function self and then some of the parameters. It says self means what object to be running on. So give me the object that we want to run this function on. So self always refers to the current instance of that particular class. And you can have many other parameters, but you at least need self. So I'll say, call this constructor, create an object. We have a class like this. How do you construct an object? We just saw we want to call the constructor. In this constructor, we have three parameters, self, color, and type. Self will be the object that will be created, and you'll get a reference to that as a self variable. So we have to specify what is the color and type of the car. So we say, create an object, car, blue automatic. So blue will be the color, automatic will be the type, and you get my car one. So here in the first line, when we have this line, this object, the self refers to my car one. In this object, self refers to my car two. So whenever you see self, you can say my car two dot start. It's say, okay, I want to start, but which car should I start? It's a self. That is the car that you call the object. Of. That means all the functions will always have the first argument as a self, which is what object are we running this function on? That's what self refers to. Whenever in the documentation, you see any function that has the first parameter as a self, that means this function cannot be run on a class. You have to first construct an object and call that function on the object. And this is your sign. Whenever you're reading the documentation and say, I have this thing, oh, I can really you know, delete this layer. I have this function, but the first, first argument is self. That means I need to construct an object of that class, and then only I can run this. So you have a class like this. You want to use start here. So you may say, how do I run the start function? Well, the first keyword is first argument itself. That means you need an object. So first you construct an object. Once you have an object, you can call the function on that object. So my car dot start will say, okay, I want to run the start function. The start function needs the self, what is the object, and my car is an object. So my car dot start will run this function on the my car object. The class can also have some variable, as we saw that there are variables inside of a class, and those are called attributes. So functions inside of a class, they're called method. Variables inside of a class, they're called attributes. There are two types of attributes, something called a class attributes and something called instance attribute. Instance attributes are something that are associated with a single class, single object. So for example, you have this class, all of these variables, self.color, self.type, self.start, self.stop. These are variables, but they are associated with the particular object. So the color will be different for each object. The type will be different for each object, etc. So these variables will be different values for different objects. These are called instance variables or instance attributes. And then you can call, take the object and say dot variable name, you'll get the value for that particular variable's value. There are something called class attributes. So if you see our class also has some variables which are defined outside of the constructor. And that means this variables will be the same for all objects. So if you construct an object, and you say my new car dot model, my old car dot model, both of them are objects with a diff initialized with different parameters. But since our model variable was outside of that, the value will be the same. If you do the same, both will say civic. So this class variables are sometimes useful for saving constant. So for example, you having QGIS, there is a base class called QGIS, which stores all the constants. So if you want to say, what are the different units available in QGIS? And those are just defined as class variables. So you'll just say this class dot you know, distance, kilometer, miles, etc. You want to define the value of a pi as a constant in the class, just define it as a class variable. So every object will have the same value. Example of this class attributes. So go back, switch back to QGIS. You can see we have our class here and we have constructed two objects, my car one, my car two. And let's say my car one dot color. Here the color is an instance attribute. That means this will be different for different objects. And we have also have my car one dot model. This model is a class attribute. If I run this, you can see this color is blue and the model is civic. If I change this to my car two, you can see the color value will be different or depends on how the object was constructed, but the model is a class variable. So that also be civic. So all objects constructed from this class will always have the value model is the same. Okay, so if you have constants, you define them as class variables. If you have variables that can change depending on the behavior and the initialization of the class, 
you can define them as the instance variables. We're almost done with the introduction of classes, but there's a very important concept left to cover, which is the concept of inheritance. The reason why you use classes is that you can build on top of each other. You don't have to build all the functionality for a particular behavior every time. You can just reuse and build on top of the class. So you take a class, you say, I want to now build a specialized version of this class. I can in inherit that and implement something on top of that. So this is called inheritance. This is kind of the core concepts on ob object-oriented programming. When you write classes, you don't have to start from scratch. You can say, I will take a class which has got some functions and variables. I will take that. I will modify something. I will add something. And then I have a more specialized version of that. An example, I have my base car class. Let's say I want to create a sedan class. A sedan is type of car. So I will say, I will create a class but it's got one more type, a seat variable. So I color and type will come from my base class, but it has got one more variable called seats. And now I have a sedan car class, which has an extra parameter called seats, and I can use that. And again, all the stuff that is available in the car is still available. So I can take the sedan class, initialize it, start it, stop it. I don't have to implement that behavior. That is coming from the base class. Only stuff that is different, I can implement in my class. Similarly, I have my electric sedan, which will take, I'll take the sedan and further add something on top of that. So I want to add maybe a range variable to that. And I can initialize that. So now my electric sedan is a specialized kind of sedan. A sedan is a specialized kind of car. If I have electric sedan object, I can still run all the functions that are in the car. I don't have to implement that again. And this means I can build hierarchy and build things on top of each other. And this greatly simplifies when you're building larger systems where you don't have to re-implement every time you want to use something. You can just inherit from something else. So an example of how to use such classes, if you have three classes like this, you can say, I have uh, my car, which is a blue sedan type automatic with five seats. And I can still say my car dot color. You can see my sedan doesn't have any color object, color variable. But since we inherited from car, obviously when we create this object, this object knows what is the color. So you can super initialize my car class because when you're creating a sedan, you say, before I can create a sedan, I need to create a car first. So this is what you're creating the car and then you're adding this variable. So super is initializing the parent class. Now you know what is super. So can this will help you understand what is going on. Most of the time you are not writing code like this. You are just using the code somebody has written and you say, I want to initialize the electric sedan. How do I do this? And then you will say, okay, I need to initialize this. How do I find all the parameters? And that's why we need to go a few levels down to see what are the different classes it inherits from. Does inheritance work in PyQJS? In PyQJS, all the classes inherit from a base class called Q object. So every class that you'll use will be, you know, inheriting Q object. There's a class called QGIS map layer, which is a base class for all different map layer types. So you take Q object, you implement QGIS map layer, which you, is already implemented. You can use this to do control how a layer behaves in QGIS. There's a, another class called QGIS raster layer, which is derived from QGIS map layer. So we'll say, I want to create a raster layer object where raster layer is a type of map layer. So I don't need to implement all the functionality of a map layer. I can just inherit from that and use that. So you can, when you load a raster layer, it says, how do I display this layer? Well, it says, okay, call this class and create an object. This class is I'll do all the specialized stuff that's required for raster layer, but all the common stuff, I'll just use the functionality from the base class. I don't need to re-implement it. Similarly, there are different types of layers. All of them are derived from the base class QGIS map layer. And in the documentation, you'll see charts like this. So if you see that I want to use this QGIS vector layer class, I can use some functions defined here, or I can use some functions defined here. Both of them I can use because they are derived from each other and all the classes derived from Q object.